If you hear this sound, that means this episode is also featured on our YouTube channel as a video. Head over to www.youtube.com slash keepitweirdpodcast to check it out. Warning. This episode contains foul language and mentions of death, murder, mutilation, and general mayhem. Keep It Weird, the podcast for all things strange, sticky, bizarre, yucky, mysterious, a little sciency, and everything in between. Each week we sit down together from across the country and we talk about something weird. Weird. And this week, of course, is no exception. We're getting real weird, as we always do. We're going to jump into a few fun and strange segments from ghostly tales to some listener updates to weird news to strange organ stories. We have got something for everyone here on the show, and we are so happy you're along for the ride with us. Let's get weird. My name is Lauren, and this is my lovely co-host, Ashley. Hi, weirdos. Hello. Weird organ stories could really be so many things. It could. I liked leaving a little bit of mystery <laughs> of like, what are we yeah, in for? for? Sure. What's about to happen? What could it be? It's gonna Weird get organ crazy. stories. <laughs> could be tumors with teeth and hair. Honestly, true. Could be enormous organs. I always wonder if like, I say I die. R.I.P. Mm-hmm. Gone too Bye, soon. Honey. Say I die, and they, like, do an autopsy or whatever. And I'm always wondering if they're going to find something really weird in my body. Like, if they're I like, always her wonder heart that was too. twice the size as a normal heart. Like, how was she surviving for this many years yeah. with this giant yeah. Or, like, she had spleen. two spleens. Because, like, you wouldn't we know. We both went you to spleen. Know unless we both went to spleen. Ooh. Can't wait for hive mind. Um, so, <laughs> listeners, we do apologize for missing last week. It was kind of a last minute situation. Lauren and I were presented with an opportunity uh, that sounded really cool and fun, so we had to. Lord, I wish I could tell you more, but I can't I know. just yet. It's um, hard. We will be posting like on our social medias as soon as it's announced. So keep your eyes peeled, and if you need a reminder of where to find us, we are at. At Keep It Weirdcast on Twitter and uh, Instagram. We're also on Facebook. We have a Facebook page or a Facebook group. So you can join either of those to get updates on what we've got coming up. Um, And you should be able to experience it in June. So we'll see. Um, But yeah, we're sorry that we missed last week. And sorry. Missed you guys. Um, You know, it's funny. I wrote, sorry, we aren't, you aren't seeing our faces because I thought we were just going to be on audio today. But guess what? There was a chance. Miracles do happen. (laughs) Miracles happen (laughs) once in a while (laughs) when you believe. (sighs) We did it. We're here. We did it. We're here. Here are our faces Mm -hmm. as per usual slash not really, because this is new, but we love doing it. So anyway, we do. before we get started today, I wanted to tell you guys about a new Patreon tier that we've added, um, and you can find it at www.patreon.com slash keepitweirdpodcast, but essentially, so there's still a $1, $5, and $10 tier, uh, but we have added a very special $50 tier So for $50, you get to sponsor a segment on Keep It Weird. Now, what that means is you get to name the segment, choose the topic that we discuss on this segment, and you get to leave a short little message. So it can be a message for fellow listeners. 
a, a loved one of yours who listens to the show. You can promote your small bids, business or your podcast or your charity, whatever you like. So, for example, let's say Joe wanted to sponsor an episode. It might sound a little bit like this. It's time for True Crime Time, stories about true crime sponsored by Joseph Oaks. When you want affordable insurance in central Illinois, you call Joseph Oaks. Love that. Wouldn't that, was that a beautiful be nice? advertisement. Yes. Yeah. Go for it. And you also and call Joe. Also, obviously. And also call Joe if you need affordable, affordable insurance. But okay. you'll also get access to the bonus episodes newsletter and discounts during the month that you purchase this as well. Obvs. And just so you know, this is a limited Patreon tier, which means there are only two slots per month. So if you are interested, head to our Patreon now and get your spot. Boop, boop. I love it. I think we should start this week with some listener ghost story updates because we both yes. have an LGS. Lauren, you go first. Yes. So we had a listener write in named Gwen who talked about how she has been sensitive to the the other dimension, ghosts, whatever we want to call other it. Side. Like she has, yeah. She has had sensitivities her whole life. She believed that her mom and aunts and possibly grandparents did, and you guys had talked over DM over how women in your family also have it. So we had connected with her. She sent in a spooky tale and then she DM'd me again right after the episode aired and said, wait a second, I got a story from my mom. She was trying to get it in time to have it on our last Listener Ghost Stories episode, right. but then she finally got it and wrote in. I was like, girl, I will update on the next episode because <laughs> we want to hear it. Please do. So she um, says, she sent an email, thank you, Gwen, saying... For context, this story, along with the writing below, comes directly from my mom and is written from her perspective. My aunt, my mom's sister, is very sensitive, to say the least, and this story is from when her and my mom were younger. So here we go, Gwen's update from the perspective of mother. It was the early 80s on Long Island, New York. Our father had told me and my older sister about a rental house that recently went on the market. Our lease was up soon and we needed a house. This house was very large, cheap, and up against some woods. It was perfect and secluded. Everyone in my family had gone out one day to go see the house. We didn't have a key and the house wasn't being shown, so we just walked around the outside peeking in windows. I've absolutely done that. Classic. Yeah. I was looking in a low window and saw a super nice room with a stone floor, like a sunroom. As I was looking in, my older sister walks over and starts looking in the same window I am. I'm talking about the room to her, commenting on the stone floor and fireplace, and she wasn't responding. I look over to my right to see why she wasn't answering my comments. She then starts walking backwards away from the house. I asked what's wrong. She told me, let's go back to the car now. We went back into the car and my father was still walking around outside. When he came into the car, she told him that we can't live there. And he said, why not? It's perfect. And she said, I saw blood at first, just pouring, pooling into a circular shape, and I started to stare. Then I saw a woman with blonde hair falling back and a man stabbing her over and over again. She didn't talk too much for days after this experience. My father looked into it himself. He worked for the local Roman Catholic Church and asked around if anyone knew anything about that house. He came up with nothing, and we ended up getting a different house completely. It was about a year or two later and my father was talking to one of the old priests about a well-known case of murder-suicide that was famous at the time. And the father said, yeah, I remember a similar case. It happened in the 40s. A local dentist had found out his young, beautiful wife with blonde hair had been cheating on him. He stabbed her to death in their secluded house in the woods, hmm. in their sunroom that had a stone floor. And then he shot himself in the head. My father asked why he didn't know about this case and why it wasn't more common knowledge. And the priest said that he was an influential doctor and because of the shame that the parents had regarding the whole thing. So they were able to pull some strings and the story never came out. So this means that not only did my sister witness a murder in detail, but it was one that virtually no one knew about besides a local priest. 
Well, what are you going to do? I hate it. I hate it, <laughs> I hate it what so gonna much. What are you going to do, huh? Uh, that's terrifying. And I don't like it at all. And I feel so bad for her aunt, for Gwen's aunt, Ooh, who had to witness Truly. That. I don't know what I would do. I mean, I remember... So remember that story? We actually have a short video on our YouTube um, that I found a couple years ago, which was such a cool find of me and and my childhood friends, Katie and Natalie, talking at breakfast about something she saw the night before. She saw the little girl ghost in my house, which would have been the second time that she saw her. And the way she described it kind of reminded me of this, where it was like she just saw images that she couldn't quite understand. Yeah. She saw my ceiling fan, and then she saw something hanging from my ceiling fan, uh, a string or something. And then she said she saw a shoe at the bottom of the string. So she thought maybe it was a shoestring, and she thought right. it was weird that, like, there was a shoe hanging from my my ceiling fan. And then she said in an instant the shoe was gone and the bottom of the string was the girl. Which is Which also just usually like, when pardon? people are hanging from a string or a rope, that means, you know, mm-hmm. they were they were hung mm-hmm. up in some way. But yeah, right. just having the the image of like something happening, but like truly not understanding what it was, because it's not like she saw right. you know the murder happen, but she saw like s- the swirling pool of blood, and she saw a woman. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it was like she was like gathering she things from the experience. Yeah, yeah, but just knew immediately like this is bad. This is a sign. There's something wrong with this house. Don't we should like not it. be living here. And Shouldn't it's live like. Here. And nobody else can see it or understand it, which is so frustrating, too. It feels like every horror movie when somebody is like, I know I'm not crazy. There's one person who's like, listen to me. Yeah. I know. So, yeah, that is terrifying. But I'm glad that she got that validation from her dad and that priest later on. Like, hell yeah, girl. Yeah. That's got to be so satisfying. Truly. To have someone yeah. come, come up and be you. like, actually, a woman was murdered in that room. It's like, thank you, God. Uh, in the exact crazy. way I said. Ugh. But it turns out the afterlife is real. Like, either way. <laughs> either way <Yes>. is scary. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, thank you, thank Gwen. you, Gwen. You can write us stories anytime. Uh, anytime you Please. experience something or your mom tells you any more <laughs> crazy fucking stories. Right. Um, please do. Okay. I promised you guys a capital F U N fun listener ghost story last yeah, episode. Yeah, you did. So here is a ridiculously specific. And hilariously coincidental story sent in by Matt Paulding. Okay. So, first off, Matt discovered our show through a guest spot Lauren did on Movies That Made Us Gay. So, shout out to those boys. We love them. We love them. So much. Um, I'm actually going back on in June. I get to talk about the X-Files movie, which I believe will be my fifth appearance on the show. It's one of my favorite shows to guest on. They're just a blast. So if you haven't checked out movies that made us gay, go check them out. That's where Matt heard of our show. And he actually said that he had to check us out because he said Lauren's voice sounds so much like his friend Erica's that sometimes he forgets he's listening to Lauren and not her. (laughs) That's so cute. (laughs) Which is adorable. And maybe I'll call you Erica every once in a while just to freak You know what? Just throw it in there. It's a fun nickname. Why not? So, anyway, Matt listened to uh, an episode of ours from a few years ago called Skidamarink Coinky Dink. That's all about coincidences. And he was like, hold on to your butts. Wait until you hear this coincidence story. So, here it is. The epic tale of Matt and Peter Lasagna. (laughs) Matt says, I listen to podcasts when cleaning, driving, etc., Sometimes I listen to either The Moth or Risk, which if you're not familiar, are storytelling podcasts where every episode is usually a theme and different people tell true stories from their lives as they relate to the theme. 
By nature, these podcasts can be very hit or miss, but occasionally a story will really stick with me. Maybe it's particularly funny or especially touching. Well, last summer in 2022, I was listening to this woman's story, which I believe was from a relatively old episode that I randomly played. So the episode was from like the mid 2000s. He's listening to it in 2022. Okay. He found it to be of the particularly funny variety for whatever reason, so much so that I even replayed it for my boyfriend later that day. The story involved a woman recalling her experiences as a troubled teen at a weird, woodsy, hippie high school in 1970s in upstate New York, where she had the biggest crush on Peter Lasagna, the long-haired hippie hunk on campus. This stuck with me because I thought the last name Lasagna was super funny and I had never heard it as a surname before. Flash forward to later that week, I work as a bartender at a little neighborhood movie theater in New Orleans. So on this day, I was behind the bar on a really slow weekday afternoon. I served this woman and her friend. It was just us in the lobby. She paid by card. And sometimes I happen to look at the name on people's cards. And on this occasion, I did take a peek at the name on the card as I was sliding it through the card reader. I forget her first name, but her last name was Lasagna. And in my head, I was like, holy shit, that's fucking weird. Again, I had never seen this last name in my life until I heard it on the podcast a few days prior. As I was finishing the transaction, I considered saying something, but I was kind of on the fence. I almost didn't say anything, but I found myself blurting out something along the lines of lasagna. That's a funny name. I continued on to tell her it's actually really weird because I was just listening to this podcast, blah, 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 blah. And somebody had the last name Lasagna that I've never heard before. And then I said something to the effect of, I joke that y'all are related, but this story took place in upstate New York. To which she replied, slightly taken aback, I'm from upstate New York. To which I replied, slightly taken aback, do you know Peter Lasagna? To which she replied, Uncle Pete! Stop. (laughs) Shut your damn mouth. So Matt says, No. On the verge of killing myself right there on the spot because I simply could not handle what was happening in this moment, I asked with a shaky voice and eyes wide with fear, Did he go to a weird hippie high school in the woods? And she replied with, The name of the school from the podcast. I cannot. I cannot. as (laughs) As I clutched the edge of the bar with fingers that had now become talons, I took a deep breath and said, well, apparently he was a real dreamboat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> a real dreamboat. Oh. We then Uncle proceeded Peter. to laugh, cry, hug, etc. All the things that you may imagine be, might be involved in the roller coaster of emotions that results from a shared traumatic experience such as this. I gave her the information on the podcast so she could have a listen to her uncle's episode. She proceeded to go watch her movie, and I proceeded to down nine shots of Jameson to calm my nerves. <laughs> That's not the end of the story, though. So Matt what? sent us this story on March 28th at 11 a.m. The okay. next day, March 29th at 2.30 p.m., I hadn't even had a chance to respond to the original email yet. Matt emails, emailed us back and said, I just finished listening to the episode We've Got Spirits, How About You? from August 31st, 2018, in which Ashley plugs the guest social media handle at Peter Lasagna, which is fucking Pete whole time. from Movies That Made Us Gay before there was even a Movies That Made Us Gay. That's right. They didn't even have the pod yet, did they? No. So, yeah, Matt completes his second email with, I really don't know what's going on here, <laughs> which is exactly is, how I feel. <laughs> that's how I, yeah. I I mean, first of all, the whole time you've been saying lasagna, I've been thinking of Pete Peter and Lozano. knowing his Instagram <laughs> handle and just thinking like, huh, what a funny random connection. But this story had so many weird twists and turns. I just can't. How wild. I just feel like, what is your connection to the name Peter Lasagna? Does it mean anything? Is your connection with the OG Peter Lasagna? 
Um, is it with movies that made us gay? Is it with podcasts? Right. Is it with us? Either way. Are we all <laughs> supposed to meet? <laughs> Are we all supposed to meet? I mean, the thing is, is it started with a podcast too. So it's like, it's right. Everything I don't know. There's kind so of many links different... to podcasts. So maybe you're supposed to start a podcast. Or Pita Lasagna. Or... Oh. <laughs> or we're going to have a podcast oh, meetup oh. where movies that made us yeah. gay and us come together and we try to find the lasagna family in upstate New York. I don't know. I don't know what it means, but I do believe that coincidences are little signs from the universe. And if that's the case, keep your freaking eyes peeled, Matt, because it seems like the universe is seriously poking you for some reason. Yeah, that it has to mean something. And I agree with you completely. And I feel like even on that episode, Skinamarink, <laughs> Coinkydink, when we talked about coincidences, we kept saying that some of them were just so crazy and mm -hmm. unexplainable or just mind-blowing that like it has to be a message there is just it, no there's nothing else that makes sense no the world is telling you to do something when that happens the world's like, we, telling you to do something but i don't know what sorry i don't know what it is so good luck <laughs> uh but thank you so much matt <sighs> Uh, that coincidence story was freaking wild and i'm glad that so happened wild. to you because what a great story to have in your back pocket Honestly, thank you, Matt. That was... Thanks, Matt. Insane. <laughs> <sighs> Anywho. Anywho. Is that all the updates for today? LGS? Yeah. Okay. We well, then on to another segment following that delicious burp. Um, <laughs> oh, and this segment always just warms my heart and my soul because I miss our YouTube series so much, but now it kind of has a new place here. It is our new segment, This Week in Beer! This Week in Weird. This Week in Weird. This Week we're getting weird. Uh -uh. And it is not a Lauren's Derp Corner this time. Oh, Sorry well. to disappoint. They will be back, but it's just That's a okay. weird we news kind story. Of, we and... can always figure out where those are going. Right. You know what right. I mean? You're like, there was a guy and he had a thing and you're like, it went in his butt. Or it's like, there was a <laughs> body floating in a river. It's like, it's a sex doll. Like <laughs> Always. You just have to tell us gonna be who it is and where they are and we can guess what happened. And then you can fill in the blanks. Yeah, it's and, like a mad yeah, lib. Except the last, <laughs> truly, there. except the last time I brought a derp corner, I feel like I switched it up, but it was close. It was also very weird. Oh, yeah, the guy who, like, stole eight cars for this week in weird. This actually comes from technically, like, a week and a half ago, but um, it's recent. I, I'm curious if you've heard of this, actually, because okay. I feel like... You and I should have talked about this. Have you heard about the cow, the cow deaths in Texas? No. Okay. Good. They're just dying. Uh, weird. But let's see. Okay. So, <laughs> six cattle were mysteriously found dead with their tongues completely removed and no sign of any blood spilled, completely baffling. Texas authorities just at the end of April, like a week and a half ago. What? Two weeks ago, by the time you all hear this episode. Okay. Tell me more. Ranchers in Madison County, which is like East Central Texas, found a six-year-old Longhorn cross cow lying on her side, deceased and mutilated along a state highway. The Madison County Sheriff's Office reported saying that the cow looked like the tongue had been removed with apparent precision. Like it was okay. very carefully taken out. It was someone who knew what they were doing surgically. Um, it was completely removed. No blood anywhere. A straight clean cut. And the cow's mouth. Oh, then there had been a hole to remove or to hide around the cow's mouth on one side. Like they, they were able to remove the hide. I said Wait. that also weird. But a cow who, hide. They were able to remove the hide, the hide around the... <laughs> Whoever did the this, murderer. somebody okay. was able to remove the hide around the cow's mouth on one side with also like a perfectly clean cut. So everything about this is just like who was able Which to do it with no mess. It was not an animal no fuss. because there would be chewing. It would not be a clean cut. It would be chewed Correct. away. Chewed away, messy, bloody, wet. Like it. It would have Wet. been all of those things. So <laughs> correct. Okay. Wet, I know, which is so gross. Which is yucky. It's why I said yucky. the word yucky in our. 
<laughs> in our intro. <laughs> um, so it was apparent that the cow did not seem to struggle during the incident That's and good. the grass around the animal was also completely undisturbed mm. and there were no footprints or tire tracks found in the area. So a very bizarre, mysterious scene. The ranchers from this area also said that there were no predators or birds trying to scavenge the remains of the cow, which decayed untouched for several weeks. So that's also yeah. Strange. Why would the that'll make no eat sense? It. While investigating the Longhorn Cross's perplexing death, authorities discovered there had been five other similar occurrences along the same state highway, located in Brazos County and Robertson County, all in Texas. Four adult cows and one little guy were reported dead by similar occurrences lying on one side with the exposed side of the face cut along the jawline. Perfectly cut. No blood spill. No mess. No fuss. No nothing. All five also had their tongues completely removed. One, on two of the five cows, authorities discovered a circular cut was made removing the anus and the external genitalia. Only on two. And the cut had been made with that same precision that we saw everywhere else on the cows. But this time, the genitals were attacked. Mm. Why? How? When? We don't know. In the later discoveries, there were also no signs of disturbances in the grass. No blood, no noticeable tracks, no predators or birds, even though it had been several weeks later. And still now, almost two weeks later, the cause of death of all six cows remains unknown. Officials in Madison County, all the ranchers, they're working with other agencies to try and solve this puzzle, but nobody has any clue what is going on here. And what's even weirder is then from this story coming out, stories from late last year started coming out that similar incidents have been reported across the country, including in Colorado, where dozens of cattle were slaughtered just this last fall by an elusive predator that left behind no tracks, no mm. blood, no mess. All kinds of things. Um, in October, I guess, 18 dead cows were found just outside the town of Meeker. Some looked as though they may have been killed by wolves, but officials with Colorado Parks and Wildlife found no wolf tracks or, like, really intense evidence yeah. that there was a predator in the area. So it still, it didn't seem, it didn't seem like it, but I guess this one was slightly messier than the perfect precision in Texas, but still didn't really make sense. And by November, after this first discovery of the 18 cows, at least 40 calves were reported dead in similar areas. So something's going on. There's a predator that leaves no tracks that sometimes is a little sloppy, but sometimes is perfect. There... Is there an alien surgeon? Alien uh, what's surgeons. happening? There's actually... Okay. I wish I could remember the name of this case. I covered it on uh, Keep It Beard, one of our bonus episodes with Amy. It was a possible alien abduction story where when his body was found... I even posted pictures of the body on our Patreon uh, with a an enormous trigger this. warning because they are some of the most horrific pictures I've ever seen. But he did have perfect circular cuts on his body. One right around his belly button. One uh, replacing his anus on each arm. And somewhere on his chest, I believe. But they were these perfect, perfect sliced holes. And all of his, like, mm -hmm. m like organs and muscles and stuff had been, like, removed via these holes in his body. Like, they were so sucked out. Weird. And, uh, yeah, his cause of death, I think they eventually ruled that he drowned and... But and like animals ate them, but like there were so many experts that were like, absolutely not. No animal in the history yeah, of animals false. that we know of <laughs> could possibly do this. Right. And that's the thing is like, okay, say it's a person killing these cows. Why? I mean, people do crazy things all the time, but like, first of all, they'd have to kill the cow first and wait for it to fall over dead because there's no way you can cut mm -hmm. out the tongue of a cow or slice off the cheek of a cow. Without any, like, fighting back and yeah. disturbance. And, yeah. Cows are docile, but they're not that docile. They'll still trample they you. They would still <laughs> yeah. move around. They'd yeah. still 
They'd be like, um, they this hurts. Just be like, Excuse you. Like they always do. Mom. You know how cows are. I know. Little sweeties. <laughs> I you love know them those so cows. much. The only explanation is aliens. <laughs> I know. I'm. That's it. I know that we love to jump to aliens, and I will never apologize for it, and I enjoy believing in it, but truly, I'm like, the only that's it, sorry, because there isn't, nobody else has come up with anything, <laughs> no one is even, like, offering another explanation, that's the thing, is every article I could find was, like, right around the time when this happened, and every article was just left with, and they're still the working end. on it, but it's like, you'd think at least one update would have come out, and it hasn't, so... What's going on? Jeez, oh man. Anywho, I just... The aliens have come, and they're surgically <laughs> they're removing here. tongues and balls and things. Which... Why? I mean, we talked... Okay, so we did our um, uh, listeners... I don't know if you actually tuned into this, because it was not an audio episode. It's only on YouTube, but it's really great. We did... Lauren and I did an episode on the UFO connection. It was Missing 411, the UFO connection. And yes. uh, we basically reviewed the documentary. But we also talked about the cases. <laughs> the Belches. Beautiful. <laughs> no, we talked about the cases. We <laughs> talked about the theories that were put forth in the documentary. And, and there was one theory that I truly had never thought of before. And I felt so dumb for have never thought thinking of it before when they were talking about, um, you know, the possibility of aliens coming to Earth for food. And I was like, yeah. wait a minute. Not necessarily like we're their only food source, but like delicacies, right. like calf right. cheek and calf testicles and calf tongue are like calf tongue. serious delicacies. So there are these like. Yeah. There are these, uh, like, illegal runners that come to Earth and do these, like, qu quick little operations. I guarantee they're not fucking allowed yep. to, but they do. And they come here, and they take our but cow's tongues. And we will not stand for it anymore. <laughs> Poor little guy. <laughs> you gotta leave them alone. Leave them alone. Uh, I feel like I can't no, but say that is anything such a good until point. I stop eating beef. Like, till then, I... I mean, true. Yeah, I sit here saying cute little cows, but I, I've had my fair share of burgers, yeah. so Oof. sorry, cows. I wish I could be I'm a vegetarian. Just as bad. Um, but I've tried, and Maybe one day. it destroys me. You did try. I remember that. I was a vegetarian for years. It was so much worse for you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It fucked me up real, real bad. Ooh. I wasn't even one of those bad vegetarians. It's like, I just eat mac and cheese all the time. <laughs> like, no, I ate really well. Right. Like, you were um, healthy. I just, yeah. I don't know. Fucked me up. Too much green were protein, killing you, man. man. Although I have gotten really into yeah. kale lately. Like, I know that's not like a new, Ooh, like, look at you. that's not like the most exciting thing you've ever heard, but I, I love kale not salad. Not a lot of people like kale, so. Yeah. Okay. But I've never like bought it for my home and made my own salads with it. But just the last Same. couple weeks, I started making my own salad dressings for the first time. Never buy store-bought salad dressing again. Homemade salad dressing is the easiest thing in the world to make and is so much better for you and it's so much more delicious. Never buy Agreed. salad dressing from a store I, again. During COVID, I started making my own salad dressing because people were making banana bread and I was Why like, not? I'm going to switch it up and do salad dressing. <laughs> so I did hummus, and sa uh, did hummus and salad dressing and both were so delicious and so fresh. And I was like, why do I buy a bottle of Italian or balsamic from the store? So I agree. And maybe I need to jump on the kale train like you. Dude, You're my inspo. It's delicious. And I can eat so much I'm of trying. it. I like kale chips. Anyway. I've actually never made kale chips, but I should because I like kale and I like so chips. Good. They're, they're, they're just, just a like little kale, crispy and like, salty. tossed in like Parmesan and stuff, right? Isn't that what they are? Mm -hmm. And you put them in the... Yeah. Or whatever seasoning you want. That's the beauty. Oh, wow. wow. You can make them taste like whatever you like. Maybe a little ranch seasoning, you know? Like get that Hidden Valley like powder. I might be trying that this evening. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, we have to go. Um, no, we have <laughs> one more story for you. It's a fucking doozy. So, yeah. beep, beep, I'm beep. So it's for time this. for Miss Frizzle to shove us into this creepy bus because we're heading into the human body. <laughs> Seatbelts, everyone. Please 
just let this be a normal field trip? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I love this segment. Also, I do know that Miss Frizzle and the Magic School Bus went all kinds of places in the universe, but every single time I think about that school bus, I think about shrinking and being able to drive into the human body. Like, that's always been the imagery that stuck Same. with me. So apologies for anyone yep. who listens to our human body segment. It's like, um, hello, Frizzle goes everywhere. Like, we know, but. Deeply offended because they have the real magic school bus knowledge. But she I'm only with you. takes it us all into about the human body. body. <laughs> That's all we have a permit for. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about cellular memory and organ transplants. Essentially, okay. people receiving organs from donors and it changes their personality somehow, which shouldn't happen. But it does happen. Shouldn't happen. So what's happening? Makes me feel strange. <laughs> so what's going on? What's going on? Uh, one of the most common sci scientific theories is cellular memory. And first of all, cellular memory is real. It's a part of our adaptive immune response that keeps us safe from diseases, infection, cancer, etc. Um Cellular memory allows our body to remember how to fight diseases we've encountered before. It's what makes vaccines possible. Um, but the science of cellular memory being able to hold on to other memories of a body is super controversial. A lot of experts say it just isn't possible. And especially since a vast majority of people who receive organ transplants do not experience these changes. Um, but there's documented cases of it happening for over 50 years. It's just the phenomenon has not been well researched in the scientific world and it's not understood at all. But... How maybe I'm jumping the gun and you're going to get to this because you and I do this to each other all the time. But is there a number of how many cases? I don't think there's a number. With? It's just happened. Okay. It's happened often enough that there have been studies on it and you can okay. you can catch a ton of like random news articles from all over the world of people okay. getting transplants and having major changes in their personality or having dreams. And I'll get to a few of them because they are so crazy. Um, Ooh, Lord. But luckily for us, the spiritual and occult world is at least keeping track of it so we can hear the stories from people it's actually happened to. And maybe one day we will have an answer for how and why it happens, whether it's scientific Fingers or, crossed. you know, paranormal. Truly, I don't care. I just want to know because I'm nosy. I so I just want something. Yeah, we need more information. <laughs> I wanted to share with you today some stories of people who have had organ transplants and know that there is something to this, whether scientists believe them or not. Ooh. Most notably would be a patient named Claire Sylvia. So on May 29th, 1988, she received a heart transplant at a hospital in Yale, Connecticut. She, as most recipients, did not know the name of her donor, except that he was an 18-year-old male from Maine who died in an accident, a motorcycle accident. I think she knew that specifically. Oh. Soon after her transplant, she started telling her loved ones about how her life was changing. She started craving pickles and green peppers, which she had never enjoyed before, particularly. Um, she started loving beer, which is something she never experienced before. She wasn't a beer drinker. Uh, she even started being attracted to curvy blonde women, which was a surprise to her as a straight woman. Uh, she, <laughs> sure. <laughs> she said her sexual preference didn't change. She was still only sexually attracted to men. But she started to be drawn to blonde women. Just like couldn't keep her eyes yeah. off these blondies. Her daughter says she Man. became a lot more masculine as well, a little more aggressive when she was joking. Her posture, even her walk, became more like a high school football player, not a retired dancer. So, one day... That's crazy. She has this intense dream. And she says, I was in a grass outdoor place. It was summer, and I was with a tall, thin young man with sandy-colored hair. His name was Tim, possibly Tim Layton, but I'm not sure. I thought of him as Tim L. 
We seemed to be good friends. As I walked away from him, I felt that something remained unfinished between us. I returned to say goodbye, and we kissed. I seemed to inhale him into me in the deepest breath I had ever taken. I felt like we'd be together forever. Now, when the dream was over, something had changed, and she said she knew that was her donor. And she wanted to prove it. But obviously the transplant program had a very strict code of confidentiality. Um, right. She even called a woman named Gail, who was the transplant coordinator, and asked if his name was Tim L. And Gail paused and said, I'm not supposed to discuss this with you. So Sylvia was disappointed but also understood she couldn't give out this information if she wanted to keep her job. So right. long story short. And if you would like to read the long version of the story, which is lovely, you should buy Claire's book, A Change of Heart, a memoir. Uh, but long story short, Ooh. she found the obituary for Timothy Lamarand and did eventually meet his family and found out he was her donor. And no that way. he loved beer and pickles and green peppers and blondes. And those blondes, that's what I was waiting for. Oh, my goodness. So she threw all of her – she researched on her own and was eventually able to find this yep. obituary. Like, and the way she, she found it was really crazy as well. But like I said, read her book. It's a long story, but it's all really wild and I really want to read it now. And she just talks about, like, how her life changed after – and she did, unfortunately, she passed away in 2009, but she did stay in contact oh. with Tim's family for the rest of her life, and she never felt that he left her. And she has publicly said, like, I know scientists say that it's not possible, but I don't think anyone could possibly explain it away who hasn't experienced it firsthand. Yeah, for sure. She experienced it. Oh my goodness. But I have a few she more did. stories. Like you can't explain the things I know. that were happening to her. Well, and that's the same thing with oh, like my... anyone who has like a psychic vision or has a paranormal experience and you know mm -hmm. a billion people can tell you you didn't experience that or like it's not real and it's like I can only right. tell you what I experienced and you can take whatever you want from yep. that and you can leave whatever you want from that. But yeah, but this it is happened it. to me. Like I don't know what you want. So yeah. then there's yep. yep, William Sheridan. William Sheridan was a 63 year old former caterer who was in need of a heart transplant in 2003. William always doodled when he was bored, but his drawing skills were stuck at almost nursery school level. Stick figures, blobs, nothing resembling anything at all. No straight lines. Like, he wasn't an artist. He just liked to kind of doodle. But as he healed from his massive surgery and began to doodle, as before, he found that all of a sudden he was kind of a masterful artist. In his own words, all of a sudden my horses looked like horses. A bird looks like a bird. <laughs> uh, William... <laughs> had the pleasure of being able to meet his donor's family, and it turns out his heart came from a 24-year-old Wall Street stockbroker named Keith Neville who had died in a car accident. And when he met Keith's mother, Donna, in 2006, the very first thing he asked her is if Keith had been artistic, and she said her son had loved to paint, he was extremely artistic, and had showed an interest in it even when he was just 18 months old. So oh this gosh. guy, not an artist, no abilities at all, gets a heart transplant. He was like me. <laughs> <laughs> gets a heart transplant. You can't even, you don't even know what hand to use when you're making something. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, it's rough. It's rough out there. No artistic ability at all, gets a heart transplant. All of a sudden, he has the ability to draw that he didn't have before. How do you explain that? Tell me that. Y'all. Science. Science, get on it. That is so cute and weird, all in one. Two other short stories here. These have no names because even recipients of transplants are confidential unless they themselves choose to come out with their stories. But these are two stories uh, that, that have redacted names out of the study um, that I read about. So 
There was the case of a 47-year-old white male foundry worker who received the heart of a 17-year-old black male student. Again, this was the only information he knew about his donor. After his operation, he developed a fascination and love for classical music, which he had never had before. He didn't think anything to do with his donor. He didn't think anything about it. Um, and actually, later on, when this uh, idea was presented to him, he actually said he would have assumed his donor would have preferred rap music, which, like, okay, pal, chill. <laughs> All right, okay. relax. All right. Let's get that out of here. But, yeah, he said he, he thought he would have preferred rap music. But as it turned out, not only did his donor love classical music, his donor died holding his violin case on his way to violin class. So classical music was an extremely large part of his donor's life. Yeah. Wow. Passed away with violin. Literally holding his violin. Yeah. Oh. And finally, the story of an eight-year-old girl who received the heart of a ten-year-old girl. Immediately afterwards, she began to have recurring vivid nightmares about being attacked and murdered. Her mother arranged a consultation with a psychiatrist who, after several sessions, brought up to the mother that she felt the child was experiencing actual memories. That they don't seem like dreams of something that didn't exist. Knowing nothing like this had ever happened to her daughter, the family decided to tell the police. They gave a detailed description of not only the dream, but the attacker. They were able to give the authorities the time, the weapon, the place, the clothes he wore, what the girl said to him, etc. And the police were able to use some of this information to not only find the man in question, but convict him of murder. Turns out her heart what? transplant came from a murdered 10-year-old girl whose murder investigation was literally underway at the time. Wow. That is horrifying to see, horrifying. you know, when you are the, yeah, when you've received the transplant and all of a sudden you're seeing these awful images as we were talking about before, where it's something you can't explain, like, you don't know why it's happening you're a child but oh my god so that is scary enough but also is there a movie based on right? this because there should, there should be, be because like receiving an organ and then solving a crime like there's something there i bet it exists I somewhere feel even if it's a little like indie, but. there's almost there's almost definitely actually there is there's a stephen king short story and it's in the movie cat's eye i think about a man who gets an eye transplant and the guy who... Yes, this is what I, yeah, was, I was literally imagining an eye. <laughs> the guy who uh, he got the eye transplant for was a murderer. And he starts like having yep, yep. like urges to kill or something. I don't remember. I do remember mm -hmm. that I think it was in Cat's Eye. Yes. And I think Mark Hamill played the guy who got the eye transplant. If anyone's oh, looking for something to watch tonight, right. I don't that is know. so funny. I don't know. Might be me. <laughs> Watch it again. Now again. Oh, this seems that is so crazy. Funny. And scientists' only explanation so far is cellular memory, which even that, most scientists agree, cannot hold actual memories, thoughts, emotions, personality traits, etc. from the human body. Alternative theories do exist, though, but everything I'm about to share is theoretical, coming from doctors and scientists who have studied cases like this, but literally have no way of testing it yet so one theory is called the heart brain um because if you notice all these stories involve specifically heart transplants not spleens like you and i mm -hmm. got excited for earlier not livers hearts right so and you know we can't successfully transplant a brain yet but maybe it would happen as well if we did a brain transplant but heart specifically Right. So in 1994, Dr. Andrew Armour, Armour of the University of Montreal introduced the concept of a functional heart brain. His studies and analysis showed that the heart has an intrinsic nervous system of its own containing around 40,000 neurons called sensory neurites. The heart acts independently of the brain, which we know because we know you can be brain dead and you can be body dead. And those are two different things. Mm -hmm. And 
the heart wants what it that's wants. That's the other thing. It's a phrase for a reason. <laughs> that's the other thing because the heart sends and receives meaningful messages of its own, which we know because we have phrases like go with your heart or think with your brain and not with your heart because mm-hmm. it does seem like they're two different entities. There's a little bit of a disconnect. Yeah. Dr. Armour believes that this center of intelligence is what is responsible for the memory transfer because all of these people have heart transplants. There is also Mm. a neuropeptide theory that was brought forward by a pharmacologist named Candace Pert. She proposed that neuropeptides, which are stored in every single cell that we have, act as some sort of biochemical connector of emotion. Neuropeptides are protein-like messenger molecules released by the brain neurons which flow through the body and communicate with everything. Our nerves, immune system, endocrine muscle and skeletal systems, via our blood, via our interstitial fluids, and via our central nervous system. So these neuropeptides have been found in the heart, which she believes could explain some forms of cellular memories in heart transplant recipients but again okay can't prove it so there are some things that are making sense there's also some woo woo theories which i would love to tell you about there's the love them there's the (laughs) magnetic field theory um that is just that cells in the heart have a unique magnetic property and respond to and interact with magnetic fields just like the cells in our brains do we know that So there may be an as-of-yet undiscovered electromagnetic connection between the brain and the heart expressed in the form of an energy that contains some level of memory. So even though it's an organ that's not connected to our brain, there might be some sort of electromagnetic something going on. Because we know we can... I would believe that. We know that we can... um, electrocute the brain and have things happen we also Mm -hmm. know that we can electrocute the heart and have a different thing happen so they just think that it could possibly have something to do with electromagneticism honestly that tracks to me completely me who knows nothing <laughs> know. that's how i feel about all the these heart theories. actually like, functions that makes sense I'm when s- you when you put it that way it's like i don't fucking know i'm sitting over here nodding like mm-hmm. that's definitely mm-hmm. it like for why sure. <laughs> why is nobody saying for sure <laughs> this is the answer psychics oh, have put forth funny. two theories one I don't know if I believe in this one, but one is the unprepared spirit theory, which they've speculated that these experiences were caused because the donor's spirit was still attached to the earth and not yet moved on. But I just don't know what I believe about spirits being unable to move on. Like, that's something I struggle with. I feel like you just, you can. Um, (laughs) But they've also put forth another theory, which I love, which is the psychometry theory, in which some psychics suggest that the heart of the donor is an object that's imbued with psychic energy of the donor. Just like different antiques can carry emotional fingerprints and lingering energy from the person who owned them before you, right. the heart is also an object that could carry... Holding on to that. Yeah. A spook, a specter, a mm-hmm. ghost, whatever. Yeah. Bad energy, good energy, like all the all yeah. the other things. It's carrying a little something, something. So, yeah, to this day, it's one of those things. We know that it happens, but we cannot tell you why it happens. Which is infuriating, but at the same time, I feel like science could get there one day. And also sure. with all of the theories that exist, it's just like any other thing we've brought up on this podcast when it comes to the science corner, the Miss Frizzle corner, like it's, Hey, this is in the beginning mm-hmm. stages and hopefully we'll There's learn so much some more one day, but that we know now that we didn't know 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, right. you go back a hundred years and it's like, fucking, we didn't know anything. And this right. just seems like one of those so things where it seems quite woo woo. It seems quite supernatural, mm-hmm. paranormal, but I really do think it's scientific in some way. I I completely agree. And again, knowing nothing knowing about nothing. science except the little bit that we read, <laughs> I'm sitting here listening to those theories like, this all adds up. All adds me. up, sure. 
but it does. Peptides. Yes. Yep. The heart has similar behaviors <laughs> to the brain Magnets, in some ways. Those fine. peptides are doing something. <laughs> Man, my arms are all over the place this episode. <laughs> I am a rubber band noodle person. You're a, a wacky inflatable arm flailing tube man. <sighs> mm -hmm. You it's knew true. it was coming. It was my burp. That's all the time we have this week for Keep It Weird. Thank you so much for joining us. If you love our show and you want to hear more new episodes, please consider donating to our patreon at www.patreon.com slash keep it weird podcast you can donate one five or ten dollars to our show and in return you'll get access to close to a hundred full-length bonus episodes you'll get a newsletter at the uh, end of every month that lauren and i create ourselves and it's fucking great mm -hmm. And last month's was, last so, month's long was so long and so, and so good. good. We okay. both like really put a lot of stories in. It was amazing. You'll get discounts on merchandise. <laughs> and there's also that new $50 tier to sponsor a segment in the episode. You can also follow us on social media at Keep It Weirdcast. And make sure you also like this video and subscribe to our channel. Because then you'll be the first to know when any new video is uploaded. It's like an exclusive we won't even have to announce it. You'll just know. Incredible. In know. Incredible. Uh -oh. Here come the bees. Here come the bees. They are the bees. They are coming for me. It's hive mind. These are two bees walking down the aisle. <laughs> it's time for hive mind. Who's sending it? You're sending it to me, I think. I think, I think you're so. sending it to me this time. Do we want to continue on? Okay. Here's the thing. It hasn't failed us yet. Should we just con – we're going to continue with the I flashing know. method until it stops working for us. And then, you know, I we'll think let's it continue it. And then if if this is the moment it doesn't work, then we're going to do our research and find we'll a new find tactic, a new you know? way to send psychic messages to each other from across the country okay uh you know the drill we are using zener cards and there's no triangles there's squiggly lines stars circles squares and plus signs lauren and i are going to relax our bodies clear our minds close our eyes and lauren is going to picture this image flashing in her brain and we're going to see if i can see it too ready Mm-hmm. I'm going to show you the shape real quick. Got it? Mm-hmm. Okay. And go. Plus sign. Yes! Is this real? Is this really happening? Oh my god! Is this really happening? I feel like I can see it. It took me a while because I thought I saw a rectangle, like a really skinny rectangle, and I was like, that's not a fucking shape. And then I just like kept thinking about it, thinking about it, and then I like the other other rectangle came in like really lightly and I was like, I think it's a plus sign. Are you serious? Well, it's, it's funny that you said it took you a minute because I feel like it took me a while to fully clear my brain. Like, because really? in the past I've been able to just like have the image flash, but today I had some like intruding thoughts. You got some other stuff. And I was going like, on. no, plus sign, focus <laughs> on the plus sign. And then this just happened on accident and it probably helps nothing. But today I was going plus sign Ashley, plus sign Ashley in my brain oh. as, I was, as I was flashing it just to be like, this is only for you. Oh my god! That's three in a row using that the is, flashing method. It's both Guys, try this with your friends. Method. Are we crazy or is this working? Okay. I know. I need week. other people to try this because <laughs> I my mind is blown. Join us next week. We're going to try again and we're going to stick with this flashing mm -hmm. method as long as it fucking works. <laughs> and in the meantime, we hope you have a very weird life. Keep it weird, Keep it weird. kids. Go. <laughs>
Did you hear yeah, that? What did he say? He went, tablet, <laughs> when I handed him the iPad to play with. That was absurd. Well. <laughs> okay. The kids are all right. <sighs> Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> no, kids are special. Um, okay, back Happy. to that. 